In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a caustics effect that you may want to use in certain types of scenes. If we take a look at this scene right here, this is default what Blender would render with these rings. But I want to have these caustics appear. Caustics are a particular type of light that is reflected off very shiny surfaces that forms these light patterns. They can be very, very useful in creating realism for things like jewelry or even product visualization. For instance, these product bottles, you can see the caustics that are forming. By default, those pose problems for a ray tracing system because caustics can end up producing quite a lot of noise in a scene. But Blender has some functionality that helps to overcome that. But by default, it's basically got this turned off, so it tries to sweep caustics like this under the rug. Let's take a look at Blender. So the way that you enable caustics, let's come up here and turn this on so that we can see in the preview renderer, is to come over to the very top icon right here where we do some configuring of the ray tracing parameters. And let's bypass sampling and we're going to come down to light paths. And light paths, there's one very down here and you can see caustics and it says filter glossy and the value is set at 1.0. What that does is it tries to eliminate noise in the scene by reducing this caustics effect. The caustics effect is happening because light on very sharply shiny surfaces that are highly reflective form those caustic effects, but they can also produce a lot of noise. The more the surface is rough, the more diffuse the caustics are going to be. But in this day and age where we have denoising, the denoising function now goes a long way to making it so you can use these caustics. So the way that you come and enable them is to simply set this value to zero. And you can see now in the preview renderer, we're beginning to see those caustics appear. But you can also see how there's more noise sort of appearing. We can see here in this ring scene, I've got a single light source. That single light source was simply an object that I created using a plane. And then once I put that in the scene, I came down and created a material that I've called light glow. And at the bottom, I've added an emission to it with a given strength of 200. And in the manual, it says these are watt units. But you, basically, you're just going to use those values in a way that makes sense, given the artistic desire that you have in your scene. The next thing that we want to consider is the use of an HDRI image. We're going to come down here to where it says World. I'm in the Shading tab right now, and we want to come down here and make sure that you are in World Mode. And that's going to show us a very simple setup right here of nodes. It's going to have a world output, and it's going to have a background. And we're going to use those. By default, when you create a new Blender file, this strength is set to 1.0, but we want to plug into it a couple of other nodes. First thing that I want to do is have us make sure under Preferences that we have an add-on enabled called Node Wrangler. So you can just type in Wrangler. Make sure that's enabled. It's built into the application. You just need to turn it on. The next thing that we need to do is come over to background here. We need to attach something into color so we're not just using a simple color. So we're going to come over here to add and we're going to create a texture. And there's a specific image texture called environment texture. Let's load in an HDRI image. So let me just find one right here. And we need to plug this in. And in order to make this really work correctly, we need to add a couple of more nodes to this. One tells it how to map, and the other tells it how to adjust the map, essentially. And to make this easy, this is where Node Wrangler comes in. Select this here, and then come over and press Shift-W, and then we're simply going to come up and add a texture setup. And it's going to be intelligent in how it configures that. It's detecting we're in the world environment. So we've got a mapping, which is how we can change it, and then generate it. And that's important for this particular case. You don't want to use any of the other options. Now, the thing that we're going to note is we're going to pay attention to this rotation value down here. This is all we need to do, but we do need to set the strength back up to 1. And now we can come over here and test our scene. And there it's pulling light information from this HDRI image. 
Let's take a look at what that HDRI image looked like. There are lots of HDRI images that you can download, and this is the one that we're using right here. It's a studio HDRI image, and obviously it's got some scene things going on, but it's really got these three primary light sources. And because of their intensity, they produce some pretty bright caustics. But when we come back over to Blender, if we want to change this so that we're changing the way that the light is in the scene for artistic purposes, we want to rotate it around. Think about this being wrapped around the scene in a big sphere and emitting from every point of that sphere into our scene. So we're going to come over to mapping right here. And it is the Z rotation that we want to change in order to rotate it around the scene for artistic purposes. And just by doing that, by coming in, we can change the direction of those emitting light sources around the scene. So the filter glossy function is not either on or off. It actually adjusts between zero and one, with filter glossy set at zero being no filtering at all. It's the most accurate ray tracing solution you're gonna get with one being the most filtering, where when it's bouncing light off these very sharply reflective surfaces, it will make the light bounce off those sharply reflective surfaces as if they were more rough, and that will diffuse them producing a less tendency to have noise in the scene. Okay, so that's basically what it's doing. So it's making a less accurate scene. You're technically losing energy, but it does have a benefit for more complex scenes.